Once upon a time, there was a magical ship that sailed in the British North Sea. The ship, the Mi Amigo, was the home of an amazing pirate radio station. It was heard by millions of people. The name of the station was Radio Caroline. Loving the weather, Radio Caroline. Loving the music, Radio Caroline. Our story begins in 1963. If you lived in London, your choices for radio would be a few bland channels provided by the BBC and Europe's only major commercial radio station at the time, Radio Luxembourg. For all that's worthwhile, your radio dial is on Radio Luxembourg. It's Huey Green! Opportunity Knock! If you were a teenager in London in 1963, what you really wanted to hear were the Beatles. The Beatles were at the forefront of a musical and cultural revolution in 1963. One of the people who got caught up in the times was an Irish entrepreneur named Ronan O'Reilly. O'Reilly launched Radio Caroline. Johnny Walker was one of the DJs on the station. Walker talks about O'Reilly and the origins of Radio Caroline. Ronan O'Reilly was kind of an Irish rebel. I think he just got caught up in the whole explosion of, of the music that was happening. And uh, he discovered an artist called Georgie Fame. And he thought this, this guy had real talent. He helped um, get some money together to fund recording some music. Uh, went round all these record companies, uh, found it very difficult to, to get him a deal. And eventually he did and got a single out. And then he, he went, round, went round to the BBC. And they said, oh, now um, we don't play records by new artists, you know. Then he went to another organization called Radio Luxembourg. And that station was completely funded by record companies buying blocks of program time. I mean, it's sort of like legal payola. So here he was with this great artist with this record made and no way of playing it. So he thought, right, well, I'll start my own radio station and I'll put it on a boat. And of course, all these, everybody said, you're completely crazy. For him, John Kennedy was his hero. And I think he, he was on a flight back from America once when he was reading the New York Times and there was a photograph of John Kennedy in the Oval Office. And underneath the, the uh, desk was his daughter Caroline. And everybody in the office was kind of suddenly looking down at Caroline had obviously got their attention somehow. And there was this, this image of the, the huge might and power of the United States government being disrupted by the joyful innocence of, of this young girl called Caroline. Uh, and he said, that's the name of my radio station. Radio Caroline signed on March 26, 1964, Easter Sunday, with a signal that covered most of the United Kingdom and a third of the European continent. Broadcasting on AM with 20,000 watts, Radio Caroline was an instant smash hit. Hello and happy Easter to all of you. This is Christopher Moore with the first record program on Radio Caroline. The first record is by the Rolling Stones, and I'd like to play it for all of the people who work to put the station on the air, and particularly for Ronan. Radio Caroline soon expanded its schedule to full-time service. Johnny Walker hosted the 9 p.m. to midnight shift and had a reported 85% of the British audience. He talks about how he interacted from the ship with his listeners. So I would go out onto the deck with uh, you know, a long headphone lead and a, and a microphone lead, and, and I'd try and identify a particular car and just say, right, flash your lights now. And, and, and we, I could hone in on, on, on just these lights flashing on the coast. And then I used to do a question and answer thing and a couple of flashes for yes and one flash for no. So I could find out the, um, the people in, in the car, how many people were in the car. It was usually a boy and a girl and they'd been out on a date or something. And that became known as sprint and flashing and uh, it became, became quite a big thing. And one time the BBC actually sent out uh, a TV crew. Uh, so we. We trailed this for a number of days and come out this Friday night to Frinton. So uh, I, could, I went out on deck that night and I could just go, right, lights on. And as far as you can see from 
either side of the coast, you know, about 15 miles of coastline would just light up. <laughs> and uh, lights off, and they all went out again. It was <laughs> a complete megalomania going on there. By the end of May 1964, Radio Caroline had an estimated 20 million weekly listeners in the UK and Europe. But nobody knew if Radio Caroline's broadcasts were legal or illegal. Johnny Walker explains. The reason that we're three and a half miles out is that um, English law extended for three miles. Uh, once you're outside that three-mile limit, you're in international waters where the maritime law applies. And there was no maritime law that said you could not broadcast from a ship. Um, so we were neither legal nor illegal, really. Um, Eventually, they came out uh, with a new law in 1967, which made it illegal for a British subject to work on a pirate station. The new law was called the Marine Broadcasting Offenses Act. The target was Radio Caroline and about a dozen other pirate stations. The law was to take effect at midnight on August 14, 1967. Of all of the pirate stations, only Radio Caroline defied the law. Johnny Walker along with host Robin Dale and station founder Ronan O'Reilly, were on the air that night. Millions of people were listening. This is your radio station. This is Radio Caroline. It is now 12 midnight. <laughs> Caroline would like to extend its thanks to Mr. Harold Wilson and his Labour government for at last, after over three and a half years of broadcasting, recognizing this station's legality, its right to be here, its right to be broadcasting to Great Britain and the continent, its right to give the music and service to the peoples of Europe, which we have been doing since Easter Sunday, 1964. And we, in turn, recognize your right as our listener to have freedom of choice in your radio entertainment, and of course that Radio Caroline belongs to you. It is your radio station, even though it costs you nothing. And as we enter this new phase in our broadcasting history, you naturally have our assurance that we intend to stay on the air because we belong to you and we love you. Caroline, continue. But Ronan O'Reilly needed more than love to carry on business. The Marine Broadcasting Offenses Act made it illegal for British companies to advertise on pirate stations. Newspapers were prevented from printing broadcast schedules. Even songs such as We Love the Pirate Stations were not allowed to be aired. Perhaps the final blow was when the BBC bowed to pressure and debuted its own pop music station, BBC Radio One, in September 1967. Johnny Walker reflects on Radio Caroline. The legacy of, of, of Caroline is that it changed radio in this country forever. Um, it brought in commercial radio. It, it, brought in competition to the BBC. There should never be a monopoly in, in things like broadcasting.